You're listening to a new episode of Girl Down Podcast with your host, me, Aeon. So sit back, relax, and listen as I unpack the uncertainty of my 30s one episode at a time. been a while but welcome to another episode of girl down podcast with me aeon and today we're just going to get straight into it i am so honored to be joined um by this guest maddie rents everybody we're going to give a warm girl down podcast welcome to maddie rents how are you doing maddie well fingers still intact i'm doing pretty well (laughs) how are you doing baby i'm doing good so the reason that i had you on the show anybody that um, follows me on this podcast or the box number 512 podcast that i did you know that i am a huge super fan of rupaul's drag race and the drag race franchise It's something that I always keep abreast. I'm always abreast of it. I have the subscription to World of Wonder. And it's something that I'm very passionate about. And I wanted to do an episode just doing a deeper dive about the franchise as a whole. And just just some maybe issues that I see with the franchise as a concerned fan, as a continuous watcher. And I figure, why not have somebody who is just as passionate about the franchise as me. Um, If you don't know, Maddie Rance has his own social media um, brand where he does reviews of all of the Drag Race franchises. And every Sunday, he does a live show called The Panel where they discuss the, they do a group recap of every Drag Race that is currently airing in addition to pop, um, pop um, culture topics, which I watch um, religiously and we've been able to connect um, through the internet. And I appreciate, I appreciate the additional voices that uh, are talking about these issues, especially uh, from black folks and other people of color, because it makes me feel like I'm not alone in this fandom. Mm-hmm. So of course it made sense for me to um, have you and thank you for, um, being gracious with your time just so we could um, t- talk about some things and hopefully have some fun in the process. Um, but before we get started, tell us, tell the people a little bit about where you're from and how you came into this role that you're in now. Okay. Well, thank you for the intro. You was like hitting the points, the ba- the little stunt, a little basic, you know, little, <laughs> it was there. I was not Beyonce, but listen, uh oh, oh see how I already do my little catch. Yes, yes. It just Good comes out now. I'm so sorry. But but really, <laughs> y'all, listen, since we're doing a podcast, girl down. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna do it now. Okay. Yes. Girl yes. down. We know yes. we know her. She wild. <laughs> All right, yes. she she wild. But no, uh, for me, where I started and came from, you know, I've always wanted to do this, but I was very much that gay child that was very nervous to speak up and be myself because you know either people were picking on me making fun of me or I didn't have the confidence to get there but after working 10 years to 11 years in customer service having every person on the planet talk to me crazy dealing with all of that knowing I had some talent I literally quit my job and just started YouTubing and I actually put it all up there I had to struggle a lot (laughs) but it's now become my main source of income the best source of income. And I've also branched out into other social media realms, but I'm just a boy from Houston, Texas. Okay. Uh, You know, okay, Houston, right down here, H town gum and coming down. (laughs) We don't don't have to quote B, but we can, that's, that's mama. But yeah, from Houston, Texas, uh, I've lived almost everywhere you can think of. I've had to move a lot for different reasons. Of course, I've always been that I'm that kind of Libra. Okay. I don't, I can't just be in one position. I have to, move around, you know, feel the earth a little bit, if that, if you want to say that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
with the channel that I have, it's really for LGBTQIA plus uh, programming. I have reviewed Pose. Shout out to Stephen Canals, who is the co-creator of Pose, gave me much love <laughs> uh, from that show. Everybody on the cast has seen my reviews, which is a gag. Legendary is a part of this list, but Drag Race is, of course, my bread and butter because I have so much love and respect for the show. As someone in college that was watching it, I was like, oh, my God. This is now mainstream. This is incredible after going to different shows as, as a young gay man and being like, okay, so we're, there's more to this than just one thing. Like there's actual entertainment qualities that we can present and we can be in our own world and actually be celebrated versus go somewhere and be made fun of. Um, so when I see shows like Drag Race as a celebration of people like us, I simply want to be a part of that community. And I have become a part of that community uh, with my channel, shout out to the Rant Pack. Uh, we're global, you know, <laughs> I, I, I have to say it. I don't want to be that person, but global. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's appreciative because that means throughout the entire world, what I'm saying still translates and we all can either agree to disagree, but the entertainment quality is there. That's just a little bit about me. I hope that was right. Did I do that right, Artemis? I hope I did. <laughs> no, that that was great. And like I said, I appreciate you um, so much. And I'm so, even though the pandemic has sucked, I'm so grateful for the pandemic because I kind of feel like you and I have kind of interacted yeah. more directly because you used to do the um, the show on stereo. T.S. Big and Smalls, that, baby. What you, yeah, what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's a key to, to be able to interact and also to hear um, some yeah. of your own personal stories that you've um, shared. So this has been really great. Um, being getting to know you and it's so great to have you in the space and to share time and space with you so let's do a little icebreaker and it, uh, the, the icebreaker is going to be centered around of course the um rupaul's um the the drag race franchise okay i was going to limit this to five but it's so many <laughs> name me name me your top 10 favorite queens of color from from the from the entire franchise. Top 10 favorite queens of color from the franchise. So we, we're not making this specifically black queens. It's now color. So it's black. It could be color. black if you want it to be black. Because you see how I have to, we have to be specific here. Right, you know, right. It could be, uh -huh. it could be black. Because I could do 10 black, black real quick. Yeah, <laughs> real quick. Black if you want it to be no, black. But... No, we could do color. I, that's fine. I'm just for the yes. girls that know. Yes. Different. Okay. So let's let's say black and color on top of it just because that's a lot of folks that I love, people who I'm friends with. I don't want to do it by numbers, but we'll right. just, we'll start from people who are currently on television now. Pangina Heels, period. <laughs> period. Like that was a blessing meeting them and then seeing them on television now doing what I know they can get. Oh, baby, it's just been fun. So, and shout out to them. They just, uh, they got a magazine um, shoot recently that recently happened for them. It was amazing. Um, and I'll be mm -hmm. seeing them at DragCon. Monique Hart, excuse me, Mo Hart, name change, get that together. Um, I've partied a little bit with Mo. <laughs> and I, now that bitch is funny in person. You want to talk about on TV? <laughs> That's so, No, in person, a whole key. A whole key. Live and breathe for Mo. Shout out to her. Uh, Bob the Drag Queen is one of my favorites of all time. Actually, my favorite of the franchise of all time. Uh, Bob has been really nice to me, too. Been supportive of the panel, supportive of the reviews when me and Jamar were doing it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we actually subscribe to each other's Patreons. <laughs> okay. J just as a, here's $5 back, and I'm like, here's $5 back to you. <laughs> Like, I love it, but that's that's Bob. I will always support Bob, and I, I appreciate an activist, you know, somebody that's actually done the work that's also a drag queen. So, that you know, very political, and I appreciate that from them. Naomi Smalls, amazing in person. Love them to death. They're great in person. Uh, <laughs> this is so many. Uh, let me see here. Oh, Widow Von Du. That was mm. one of my babies. Met her. A gag in person, live and breathe for that bitch. What I said, first of all, I already know you're going to be on the show. And she was like, oh, I said, because it was right before the season started. I said, but I, I'm not doing all that with you. I already know after seeing her perform, I said, bitch, I already know you're about to demolish something. She goes, wait for that first episode. And I was 
Mm. Somebody who needs to be back on All Stars immediately. Hmm. Okay. You know, I don't give tea. I just... Yes, yes. But somebody that needs to be back as soon as God... You know, it would be a good decision if we saw them again in a couple of months. It would be a great decision. I think that would be a smart move. Mm. Yes. All right. Uh, (laughs) Not Juju B. Not for the fifth time. No baby. Um... No, I, Jujube actually is one of my favorites too, only because that was one of the girls who of color was always put into the mixture and she presented. Now this is what happened this last season. It's been, but I'm talking about early days, Juju. I was all about the B. Um, Queens of color that I love that didn't snipe anybody at DragCon for very high boost. Mm-hmm-hmm. Latrice Royale was another one of them. Um, love Latrice down. That's, that's auntie. Raja O'Hara. That's sister. That's drag. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's family. Honey Davenport is my drag mother. We don't know how many now. Wait, a minute. I can keep going down. Uh, Monet Exchange is technically we're technically related. I was gagged, but <laughs> scared by mm-hmm. that. Love me some Monet. That's, that's honey. That's her her drag daughter. Exactly. So I was right. like, oh, this is the key. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, I could name a whole bunch of them, but. God, this is is difficult. I love all of them. That's how. Yeah, I, that's how. I, I, I love. I love all of them too. I'm. A, I'm going to give my ten. Oh, Mine's silky, be- silky, and TKB. Silky, nutmeg ganache. Yeah, silky, nutmeg ganache, and uh, trendy K Bone also. My bad. Them, them two especially. Oh, and a curious C Davenport. Yes, yep. I love a curious. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm going to give my 10. They're in no particular order. And I think mine's will be different because I don't have direct interaction. So I, <laughs> so if, if my my heroes will still remain my heroes. Right. My head, <laughs> when I see them. Um, the first person that comes to the top of my mind, one, and I know it's probably going to be controversial, is Tyra Sanchez. Not for any of the posts when shenanigans not james not james yeah but Mm -hmm. i remember so i started watching like rupaul's drag race in its inception like a couple of months after i physically transitioned so and it was something i used to do with my trans mother like that was our thing and i remember watching her season and i was like she's a bitch but she's it and I just remember <laughs> watching, especially in those early episodes, I was like, this bitch is going to win. Cause she was just, she was just on point and she just didn't let that shake her. And I think I look at Tyra in the in, encapsulated in her season. Yeah. Season I used to cuss did. people out for Tyra. I used to. Yeah. Um, and, I, used and I feel to. like post Tyra, even though Tyra has, Tyra, who is now James, you know, has been involved in a lot. I think a lot of that had to do with um, the racism and the fandom and how that wasn't addressed. Absolutely. And, her, and t- James's story is what happened. It, it's, it's the consequence of what happened when it was unaddressed for so long. And, it, you know, it made somebody right. react in that way. So even with all of the shenanigans, I still have um, compassion for James. And I hope that one day in the right time, they'll be able to get um, redemption if they want it. Because um, when James was tired, it just meant a lot to me just to see somebody. So, and I believe me, James and I are the same age. So to see somebody mm. that young who was like eating them bitches left and right and was black. Tyra was South, a threat. She was a threat. Yeah, and yeah from the South. I, I just, I needed yeah. to see that. So um Ty- it- Yo, go ahead. No, I no, I I had my own story with Tyra, but I used to be, and I still am a fan of them. And I what they did on season two was it. Mm-hmm. Like they no one can deny that. That baby cleaned house. Tatiana, I love you down, but she was looking a tube dress fool back then. Okay. Like right. <laughs> you weren't on that level of that girl. She was making clothes and everything and right. was doing it from a young age and w- a black queen we were happy to see all of this so it is sad that that happened but yes during season two the fandom and now even now because that stuff didn't get addressed until like season seven and even then it wasn't until like all star like season seven was like the new wave of this it really didn't get addressed until the vixen you know at her moment 
So yeah, Ty Tyra James James Ross, formerly known as Tyra Sanchez. Um, let's go to recent Simone. Oh um, yeah. Oh, I forgot Simone. My baby Simone. I'm sorry. Simone. Simone she's she's kind of like a, a na- amalgamation to me of all the things that we like about black queens mm-hmm. tied up into one package. And she came on and she knew the show. Like. Mm-hmm. I still think about some of her runways that she presented last season. And I was like, it was the nineties fashions for me. It was the nineties flair. She was presented the runways last season in a way that I have not been moved from season 14. We'll get Mm. to it. But um, somebody that just, I like people that know what they're doing. They, They know that they're on TV and they're bringing a point of view and they're bringing a reference and, I just, I just loved her journey. I just like every, everything she did was like a photograph. It was iconic, mm-hmm. and I just love her um, for what she did. Um, Shea Coulee, um, another one. She kind of reminded me of Tyra, where she was just um, confident. She was confident, a bitch from the Midwest, chocolate girl, but still had this high fashion. Um, point of view, but wasn't and I I liked her in her original season. I was gagged that she didn't win, Ooh, but I love <laughs> that she was able to come back for all stars and get like when we talk about iconic runways, that fucking new runway bitch. Mm-hmm. When she came out with that effect, I was like, oh, this bitch is gonna win this season. Like I that image is still burnt into my head because she's she's just that girl. She's that girl. Um, I love Shea Coulee. Um, I would just say Bob the drag queen. Um, Bob is just, I remember saying Bob on their original season and Bob is a fucking cackle. Just just like universally funny and Mm -hmm. just, it's just like when I saw, when I saw Bob that first episode, I was like, this bitch is going to win. Because now the runways could have been better looking back, but I think I hope that Bob is on the Superstars winter season, like mm-hmm. just so we could see that glow up. But Bob is the whole package. I really like what Bob has done post Drag Race with the Crown. I really love We're Here. I just love that move, movement. Um, I love Bob, so that's four. Um, five, I know this is probably going to be like, huh? Lanesha Spar- Sparks, um, somebody who I feel um, went home too soon, somebody who I feel was victim to the the um, the Puerto Rican girl edit, mm. um, but somebody who I still, I, I wonder like, what does she do? Because the fact that she made all of that stuff and she was so polished mm. and she was just gorgeous, I, I really enjoyed it. Season five was an iconic season, but she's somebody I, I, I really liked. I really, it was just something about her that I like, and I just wish we could see more of her. Um, Raja O'Hara, um, somebody who I felt didn't get a fair shake in season eleven, because mm. um, I feel like on All Stars, even though she had the feuds, like the level of talent and the level of runway, she had that on season eleven. She had, and I think. Raja is what you want a drag queen to be, like the the personality, the bitchiness with the softness, but the fact that that bitch does everything herself um, and was able to, like All Star Six was such a good, I, I, she was my winner. It's no shade to Kylie, love Kylie down, but um, she was my winner. And I just, um, I, I, love, I love that she was able to get a redemption and I just, um, my my heart is soft uh, for her. Mm. Um, another one. This is going to be controversial, but um, Nina Bonita Brown. Mm. Um, though Nina Bonita, Nina Bonita has a very acerbic um, personality. Um, very confrontative. But I th- the thing that I like about Nina Bonita Brown is that even even though she can have a sa- sour personality I think she knows and I just like her because she's in a lane of her own I feel like what she did on season nine though it wasn't fully developed and it wasn't fully realized I still think she's in a lane of her own I think nobody does what she does and I um I will be curious to see her on an all-star season like you already have like 
the makeup and the looks. I would like to see the fashions elevated, but she's somebody that was um, very impactful, especially during those early episodes of season nine. Um, and it, it's, it's something about her personality that's kind of like left of center, but it's something that, um, I, that kind of speaks to me. Um, I got three more, so I, I really have to think. Um, and it's no, and it's no shade. Oh, Kennedy Davenport, other than Kennedy Davenport is just motherfucking Kennedy Davenport. Um, it's something that I really relate to about her personality. Um, the fact that she's just a fighter and that she's just going to be there to the end. Um, the fact that she sent milk home and it was just a key. <laughs> that was iconic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was RuPaul's like, with great power comes great milk. Because it was no explanation. It didn't yeah. need to be had. Yeah. Like, girl, send her home. I'd yeah, have done the and same. <laughs> and it's just, it's just something about Kennedy that's just down home, that's um endearing, and that um I hope that the franchise just keeps um using her. I, I do feel like she got a bad shake, though her personality is is kind of bitchy. I kind of just see it as like that old honorary auntie that re that really deep down inside really does love you and really does does fuck with you, but they're just not gonna um, give you that much. Um, let's top two or last two. Um, Heidi in closet. Um, oh, I love Heidi. I don't cry a lot, but when she went home, I cried because I feel like we were all on that journey with her. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I just, I, I. I like the story of the girl that came from nowhere that had nothing that it, it just speaks to the resilience of us as black people and that we still have spirit and we still have heart. Mm. Um, I like the glow up. Um, I will be interested to see what she does on the all-star season, just, you know, with the glow up, but, um, you know, she, she really had all the odds stacked against her and mama lasted. She, she lasted a lot longer than, um, people thought that she did. Mm. And, um, yeah, and I would I would have to say my last one. Um, I would just have to say Monet. Mo I would say have to say it would have to be a tie between Monet Exchange and Monique Hart. And I only put them together because I feel like we saw them together. And I don't know they 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 feel like two like they do stuff wildly different, but they're two bees in the same pie. I love Monet. Monet is another one. When I saw her personality in season 10, I didn't think she was going to win. But mm. I was like, I like this bitch. Like, I could see me having a blunt with this bitch. He came with the. She just seems down to earth. Um, Monique Car she Monique just seems like a key key girlfriend. Also, have to give a shout out to Monique in this UK season versus the world. Every one way, she peed. She peed. She peed. She should have won, in my opinion, but I guess this is UK versus the world, a UK girl had the win, which I'm like, why Why didn't we just call this international all-stars so Monique could have won, but but um, I just like, the, I just like the glow up, and I don't know, I just, I miss the sisterhood. I love season 10, mm -hmm. all of the Black queens on season 10, when they had that deleted scene moment where all of them were just, kid, because that's who we are. Mm -hmm. We like to key and we like to, like, that's how we are in the dressing room or just everywhere. So shout out to the people that I named, but I love, I love all of the Black girls. I love all of the girls of color and I just respect y'all because I'm not on the show. I'm not in that world, but I just know how hard it is being of color and being in that world and just having to fight for your place. So shout out to all of y'all, but those are my ten or eleven. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we we did the icebreaker. So let, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this conversation. Um, I was inspired to have this conversation in light of Pangina Hill's elimination from uh, this the inaugural season of RuPaul's Drag, Drag Race UK versus the World. Mm. So for those of you who don't reach, the, who don't watch the show, uh, they did. So this most recent season featured three queens from UK and uh, several queens from different franchises throughout the world who they came to UK to film to to become the 
the mother tuck and clean of the world and record a song that they probably recorded from UK and not Hollywood, but that's a whole nother conversation. Mm. Um, and the show basically followed the format. If you ever watched All Stars, it followed the format of seasons two to four of All Stars where the top two queens lip sync and they had the power to eliminate the bottom queen. So the, the particular episode where Pangina went home was controversial, um, which was a Snatch Game episode. It was controversial because up at that point, Pangina Hill, it was her game to lose. Um, she had two wins, two challenge wins, two lip sync wins, and this was her first time in the bottom. And um, it was a shocking elimination because... Me as a viewer, even though I knew that somebody could have played the game, I wasn't expecting Pangina um, to go home. And it um, it harkened back to other All-Star seasons where there, there had been shocking eliminations. And I guess you could say it is made for good TV, but for people who, cons- who support the franchise, for people who consistently view, um, we become emotionally attached to these people, especially people um, who are doing good and who we would like to see with the crown, even if it comes with money, even and if who doesn't, we know how winning a drag race um, franchise really sets these sets these queens up for success in the long run, how it elevates their profile. And usually when these games are played, typically it's the queen of color that bears the brunt. Um, uh, of these games, um, unfortunately. And it begs the question, Is the, does the entertainment value outweigh the, the nature of the competition to see the best of the best battle it out and get to the finale um, to the end? And it, it's, it becomes, what's the critique on the franchise as a whole? Is it, as it grows, there's more incentive for them to do all of these stunts or to have these big moments. But there's a lot of times where the fans watching the show, we can honestly see that this queen that we wanted to win has been cheated of the of their opportunity to have their shine. So wh- what were your particular thoughts? Well, you probably talked about the Pajana Hills elimination, um, but what are your particular thoughts on um, the queens voting each other off now that we were coming on up to the year of them having this format? And do you feel like the franchise is better? Should, should they lean more towards entertainment or has it gotten away from like the roots of the competition and really having the best of the best battle it out to the end? Um, so it's a lot to unpack here in reference for this situation because it is about the entertainment value because if we're not entertained, we wouldn't come back to watch the show. Now, as far as it being about talent, that is subjective. And that's where we get to that conversation about what do we consider talent? What do we consider to be entertaining? What do we consider to be beautiful? Because somebody's drag is not everybody's drag. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And with drag, that's a interpretation that is left open. You know what I'm saying? Because real talk, anybody can do it. We've, we've seen it from the show trying to showcase someone like Maddie Morphosis, moon pie face looking ass, be up there on the stage. <laughs> Which is the, one of the worst straight drag queens. That, like, There's better and we know them. We see you know, <laughs> There like, are bros that are <laughs> way better than that one. But at the same time, it was a way to show that this isn't just for one person it's for multiple people for example uk they had victoria scone uh excuse me yeah victoria scone who is a mm-hmm. a, uh, a fab um assigned female at birth cisgendered woman who was on the show and it's like okay and she gave but she had a right. knee injury <laughs> right. Th- then this season alone on drag race five queens are trans women five five mm-hmm. and it's amazing because carrie came in stunting and it almost like she had an intervention and everybody finally found themselves. No right. shade to it, but it's like all of a sudden this beautiful woman walks in. You're like, oh, that's right. I do. I, I Let's have this conversation. It's, it was a beautiful thing. I like to see that with the show. However, we get into these stunts and shenanigans where, for example, somebody's runway is pitiful and they win the episode. 
And it's like, how? Because RuPaul was entertained by this individual. We're not entertained by them. The judges, it's subjective. And that's where we get into this thing. Like, for example, if we go to the Jimbo, Pangina, Lemon situation, okay? Pangina sent home people who were very much possibly going to do damage in the competition. Now, whether she sent Lemon home because she thought Janie was better is what I think is what happened. I sent Lemon home. Honestly, she wasn't given what she was supposed to give. Janie's clothes sucked. But I see Janie doing better and we developed a relationship. Sent her home. Jimbo was a toxic entity in terms of how they would address the people they chose to eliminate because they were never direct with it. Ask BB Zahar, but now that works out, okay? The trust isn't there. Like, who is this? And what, and what are you going to do when you actually win a lip sync, which we know was never going to happen? But it's never going to happen. Ever. That is a grown man walking around trying to find the left leg to his right knee. If I could sum up Jimbo's lip syncing, it's an episode of The Simpsons where they're watching the Crest of the Clown show that got canceled. And there's some men dancing on stage with their pants down. Old man cranky ain't what he used to be. Ain't what he used to be. <laughs> That's Jimbo. Cause, cause you literally, you almost killed Pangina. I thought that was a war. See how that works? Aha! Uh -huh, thank you. Okay. Uh, but when it gets to the situation about entertainment, all the talent and stuff like that, it's what we view as viewers and what we consider to be that. But it's really the production team that is throwing the narrative of the storyline around and working a way right. for us to be entertained by a situation. For example, and last point to this, because we can we can really bring up the seasons and just bring this down, but Mo and Blue were in a tiff at the beginning of this season. You made me feel like I was lesser than you. I'm so sorry. The finale was them two lip syncing against each other and Blue wins. All right, that if that's not a storyline for somebody, oh, we actually build an alliance throughout and actually I am the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think Blue did a really good job. I think she played the smart game because in these situations, like you say, is the lipsticks okay? Is it all right for the queens to make these decisions? Yes, it is. But us as fans have to chill the fuck out on the decisions. It's not that deep. Like, what would you do? What would you do if you had the chance to send Pangina home and that bitch has been winning? <laughs> I'm not playing fair. Oh no, you're gone. Like, I love her. You know what I'm saying? We're, fr we're, we're cool in real life. Out, Pan, like out, I, I gotta win. Blue would have been next. Oh yeah, I would have been, been wearing this out. I'm gonna send everybody home who I know is going to fuck my chances up to where when I'm at the yeah, finale- Yeah, Juju B was dumb for that. I was like, I would have sent that bitch home. This, it, 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 I would have I sent her home. It's because loyal. We, we knew if Bagger would have mm -hmm. got to the final four, Bagger was not winning anybody's lip sync. Mo picked Bagger because Bagger was shit. Like, like, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? It was like, okay, who right. should I go against? Bagger? Duh. So why not, you know what? Someone's like with that um, in my review, they said, Matt, why not keep Jimbo then? I said- No, Jim Jimbo- I said, because Rue would have found favor in foolery if they got to a lip sync and Jimbo would have won lip syncs doing nothing. Guarantee it. Because that's what RuPaul do sometimes. If you like someone, yeah. I found that funny. So I'm going to go ahead and let that be. Mm. No, I felt like Jimbo should. I would have chosen Jimbo's lipstick. One, I felt like she was the worst. And I'm, that was cool. That was weird. I felt like yeah. Jimbo was one of them queens. She's like the archetype of the queen in in like the Drag Race franchise, where it's like I'm weird, I'm kooky, and she kind of gives me like a um, what is that? Um, um, um. Tammy Brown, where uh, it's like, yeah. I'm weird and I'm kooky, and I'm not going to follow the rules. I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want to do, and just be weird. And I think she did that in the musical, and it backfired because it was the lie. lie. It was the lie right. for me about the injury, which is so funny that people were like, Pangina was lying. I said, Jimbo literally faked an injury to get less choreography because they right. knew and you were still horrible. And you did, you did none of the choreography. Like the basket in front of your face, but for why? Who yeah, asked for you that? Deserved, now her runway was sickening, but That's, bitch, you, do, you deserve to go. Like, I would have liked to keep to see her runways 
at least, but she, I would have said her age. And she, I just don't like people like that because they're unpredictable. And it's like, when we're playing this type of game- I need to know I what your moves are going to be. Exactly. Yeah. And that's how you would play something like that in the Big Brother scenario too. You don't keep a wild card. Like when Morgan McMichael said at the beginning of her season, oh no, I'm sending the big dog home. Episode one? Oh, if I just win this episode <laughs> and you're at the bottom, you're going to go home because- right. I am now your immediate target for the next episode. The fuck are you talking about? That's why I always get pissed off with these fans taking things personally on behalf of people that they don't know, like, and don't know you and probably will not know you. You probably, right. you'll be the fan that hugs them and they say, you musty. You'll never know. Cause they don't right. know you, but right. like with Jumbo, I love them down. The runways are amazing. The mind is brilliant in all the weird possible ways. But at the same time, there was an attitude there that we didn't get that was then given different edits for other Queens on the show that were of color. For example, Pangina with the sobbing bit Jimbo, it's already been no notified. Everybody knows that you threw a tantrum when you got eliminated. Like you were going off backstage. Why was that not shown or given the long run for them leaving out? Because it would have been a bad edit for that person. Right. Now, we, some of us took Pangina's elimination sadly because we felt the uh, the pain of losing that honor or feeling right. like we lost that because we're about also black and POC people. We know about right. bringing it home for the family. Right. Other folks took it like, how dare she cry? And it really blew my mind. Yeah, like, that's such a, people said that. Yeah, they were like, she, her crying is such bad sportsmanship. She no, she not, got karma. Is... She got karma. I'm like, y'all don't know the definition of karma in a privileged lifestyle. You would never know what karma feels like. You yeah, wouldn't know. She, like, it's a bitch. I will fucking cry. I will fucking cry if it was me because you're on national TV and you want to you wanna at least make it to the final. You want to show you're everything. The you have to only show. representative from Thailand. Right. The, and you were a judge on the show. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. For me, let's say I've been talking some mad junk on YouTube for years and, and eventually I'll be on the show. God damn, y'all know me. I always say these things and they come to fruition. But when I get there, let me go home second. Ooh, I'll be back there like, ah, they got me. Because <laughs> I talked a heavy game and that's also my rant pack is rooting for me. I'm trying to take it home for y'all. I'm trying to bring it back so we can talk shit. Maddie said it and it was done. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. So why not feel for that person who lost in that moment because we've all been there before where we didn't get our way or where something we worked really hard for just was out of reach. And when Blue made that decision, it was the game winning decision in my opinion. You sent her home, it's a wrap. Cause mind you, like you say, if Juju B had pulled Blue's lipstick or Mo, whoever had won, it would have gone to Mo immediately. It would have been Mo's to win after that. It was only two episodes left play the damn game. That's why I like the lipsticks a little bit. Because if I'm in there, I know I'm good at my shit. A panel episode, I'm winning. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So let me get to the lipstick. I'm a beater, mm -hmm. clearly. And I'm gonna send the bitch home that's either gonna take my shit or has been bothering me. Either the heaviest competition or the one I like the least. Send me, fire me up on social media. I'll have all my accounts uh, on mute. That's how it's gonna go. But it's the game. And I, I wish people would chill out a little bit on it. But again, when you say the talent part and entertainment, they're doing entertainment, not talent. Right. It's, it's, it's clear. We have seen people run through the competition and have it and then get very minimum critiques for why, why is this person always safe? Why are they always going to the back? Why are you not speaking to them? Or when you do like Michelle's selective uh, memory with people, mm. this person gets, all the praise, even though it's simple, is what she'll say. This one, I see what you tried to do there, but it's not big enough. Like, you're going to have to go larger. Meanwhile, Miss Mom over here with flat fucking hair, cheap earrings, and some good old pay less heels on right now with the uh, bottoms glued on, you gave all the love in the world for, for giving you the minimum. Yet this bitch has to give you the maximum effort for you to even go, that's good. There you go. There, there it is. <laughs> so, so, it's, so it seems like for for the queens that are coming on to future season of the show, you have to like. It's great to have to have all of your teams crossing your eyes dotted, but you have to know that you're doing TV, and it ha it's got to be TV. Like it's got to be TV. Think of the show you've just been watching for almost what over a decade now. Like you have to sew, 
one. <laughs> if you're on here and you can't sew or glue or construct an outfit, don't, don't audition. Acting, can you read lines? Start practicing with your friends at home right now. For the love of God, they're going to give you more than one acting challenge. Do you, are you not good at improv? There are classes for free. Please sign up. Like, it, there's so many little things people need to do before going on the show or auditioning, but also be prepared to not be given the best edit ever because as you sit with all these personalities, you might not shine. And also walk in with a story together. That's what I hate from folks that, like, Orion's story gave me, like, snooze. You know, we heard a couple of things. Yeah, it's like, y'all gonna find any more interest in, like, a white girl sort of the backwoods somewhere? Like, and there's a lot of these Southern queens who, like, Nicole Page Brooks, you know, the, the girls from Atlanta, right, right. that you could bring on here that will give us some spice, to give us a little, ooh, right. ah, ah. But you have these babies, like, hello, my name is such and such, and I'm here to go you drag. And it's like, no, baby, I'm not here for the volume of two. I need a volume of ten. We're watching a show. Right, You right. know, but they also need quiet people, like, say, Willow, who is quiet but loud. Like there's a difference where someone's quiet but has a personality versus someone who's quiet who doesn't have one. Um, come in with a story and come in with something together. Not fake, but like actually, okay, what do I want to give the world? That's what I would think to myself. All right, Maddie, before I walk up on here and this camera's in my face, who am I going to be? Well, y'all going to see me just like this. <laughs> but like, it, it's, I already got it. I already know what I want to do. Like when I walk in, bam, boom, listen, puss, puss. Actually better than this. I think my tag phrase would be, we're here. And that would be an old to, uh, we're here as well as the rant back. We're here. <laughs> like, oh yes, we've arrived. And I'm afraid you all will lose. Like it'd be something very much like that. Or uh, if I came in as piece of cake, um, dessert is served unfortunately just for me like very much that but right give this per remember this baby walked in and answered the phone and gave us a whole voicemail i was confused like hottie we're not following this yeah she doesn't know that she's on tv which it was very i'm in my room it's instagram 30 people are watching i so so so, so since we're on season 14 what but okay, we, we both kind of alluded to it. What's <laughs> missing from season fourteen? Um, well, cornbread. They, that's I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could just you know cut a couple episodes if you really want to talk about it. Because high key, this should be coming up on the top five or six now situation, and we are still at eight people, eight girls, and I would like to see a double elimination like that would. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, God, please. Maybe. Um, <laughs> but it's, we may also have a situation where no one goes home again. It's, I don't feel like I've seen anything like sickening enough for me to want to see a lot of, because the only girls that, well, the only girl that's really giving me something so memorable on the runway is Willow Pill. And Angeria for the majority. In the beginning, have I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. Movie. These last and two episodes. Yeah. I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. Uh, but I, yeah, Willow is giving. Oh, Willow gives something different. And it's like, oh, that's new. She she fresh. knew that she was coming to the biggest stage on TV. And I, I like, I like her. I wish that the, I know we want to give a voice to everybody, but like, we need I, we need the economy. As long as season 13 was, I felt like in addition to Simone, like there were a lot of moments for more than just Simone. But I mean this is like none of the wrong like, I'm gonna be honest, none of the wrong every time I see and they got some good ass themes. Oh, they've had shoulder, really great themes this year. Shoulder pads shoulder is not pads done justice. Is they were not done justice for shoulder pads. They should have came out with their dynasty full fuckery right, on. Like, like, Where's the references? Like, it, it's like people just like chats, shoulder, like they just did like the, like where are the references? Where are you pulling me into your culture? Um, Georgia's just so many missed opportunities for me to get to know who mm -hmm. you are, what your references are, where you come from. And it's, 
I don't like I was expecting so much more coming off of season 13 because it was such a yeah big season. 13 I, was on. It was I, on and popping. Like no shade. UK versus the world and their six episodes slay season um four. But I think it's a good thing just to show that you're not gonna get consistency from season to season. But it was runway wise, yeah. UK versus the world, they they were coming, especially Jimbo, Pangina, Mo, them three in particular were consistently every episode. Oh, that's love. Oh, that's love. Oh, some of this has been kind of mixed bag, and they're coming off of All Star Six. Some of the runways that we oh, call air, those are great. Um, I think with what's going on, well, for me, I didn't really care for the "Hi, Carrie, are you ready to talk about your childhood again?" moment. Like right now, like real talk, like every episode that they had the trauma ward, as I like to call it, they got into Carrie's journey as a trans woman, and I thought to myself. I was like, okay, you do know there is more to her than just the past that's happened here. Are we asking her questions about her life right now? Because all I'm hearing is my daddy did this. I was never allowed to do that. Da, da, da. And I'm right. here for those moments. I talk about my real experiences too. It's just as a viewer, I felt production was preying upon that more than I would like to. Whereas when I saw her performance wise, it wasn't meeting the expectations of somebody that's going to stay there long. It felt like, let me find out everything that bad happened to you. And because she's going thing. home tonight. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't like those kind of moments. And I always say that, watch who you talk to, watch who they talk to y'all. Cause you know, if they get that information about somebody that's either past an illness or something. <laughs> yeah. Down. She's getting an elimination at it. Like, She's because elim- now you know what their problems are and we don't need to ask any more questions. I guess they're sad and terrible. Cinema. Like, right. I don't know. It just, I felt weird how the season went and how it's going now. And also the the fandom in reference to the Dia stands, the Jasmine stands now, the Georgia stands are all like in this weird bubble of people. Like, you can't talk about those three. Because, you know, Diabetti may be the last Titan on Attack on Titan, but don't talk about her. She's keeping it real. Jasmine over here looking like Alyssa Edwards, but skim milk. And, you know, they're they're fighting for her on her behalf because apparently she is the best lip syncer that ever graced this earth. I didn't know. And no. jo- and George's my little Selena, bitty, bitty, bum, bum. I love George's down, but uh-uh, it ain't it even been a flawless run. It ain't even a flawless run. Deja Sky, love her to pieces. That's my favorite Tio. I love Tio. However, until we got to shoulder pads, I was not seeing her for the runways. I'm just gonna be real with you. It was I like, don't even I didn't even really care for this. Like it, I felt like the, she was robbed this week. I felt like she should have won, but I felt I don't I think with a lot of the, these girls, it's gonna be once they see their souls on TV, it's gonna be like, what was like what was what was I thinking? Like, That's what I Raja think. said. When I talked to Raja when they did my face, you know, for that video, check it on my channel now. <laughs> Raja <laughs> painted me in my full geesh. We talked about that and she said, once I saw myself on TV, I was like, oh, I was a ass. Oh, I didn't like that. Mm. Mm. And, I, and, and we, I could see those moments, but I also couldn't see somebody who just couldn't see themselves. Like sometimes I don't know what I'm looking like. Okay. Right. It's it's hard. You you gotta that's what's called about taking accountability and self-reflection. That's a blessing on this earth for those who actually accept those moments. Cause once you can see yourself, everything becomes way clearer. And then you recognize what you're willing to deal with and what you're not. Trust. <laughs> Trust. And if Bosco comes out in another brawl and thong fed and G Star, I'm gonna scream. It's just like like they they don't even look like they were constructed to be together. It just looks like separate. It was the and, jacket that right, covered it that was like right, so that that's the it difference. Look, <laughs> and then it's just like we're gonna read her for the look, but she's the winner. Like that it just like a lot of and like this season is so bad. You should be able to remember who won for what. The only people that I remember winning from this season, Willow for the ball. And then Andrea for the talent, and then for the J Lo runway. Mm-hmm. That J Lo runway. Yeah, and everybody else. I'm just like, what did it? What did it? I don't know. I'm committed. I'm a committed fan, so I'm going to watch this out till yeah. the end. Yeah. I hope that Andrea and Willow make it to the end, but um, 
Yeah, this season has. I, I'm looking forward to this new All Stars. Espana <laughs> starting later this month. Oh, Espana is about to be. Oh, when you talk, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, when you talk about a, a season that can't like that had the benefit of not being the first, but came out and did what needed to be done, and just had, like like you would have thought like that was Espana season thirteen. Like the, that that was an iconic. Production Carmen, judges. Oh, Carmen can't wait to see her at DragCon. My that bitch never I'm, seen Drag Race and competed and won. Like <laughs> right, like she came in, like and that um the, the, the Menno runway. I oh, I, that was i iconic. Um, iconic. It's, um, I, for me, for me with the show, you got to understand as I review it, I love the series. I'm still going to love it even when it gives me nothing sometimes. So with this season, I actually am enjoying it. I just find myself conflicted sometimes when I'm watching it because then contradictions happen and hypocrisies occur. And I'm like, okay, I guess we're still here. Let's just continue. And sometimes it feels like the runway is counted more for somebody than somebody else and the challenge right. thing outweighs things. It's like, I need a grading system. If y'all could start doing that, this counts for this much percentage, this counts for that. I'd feel a lot better. <laughs> I'd actually right. be like, oh, okay, well, the, the numbers don't lie. See, we need numbers here. <laughs> I What I will say that I'm enjoying about season 14 is seeing all of these white girls go at each other because it <laughs> means that the girls, we don't have a like villain girl of color that's the villain. And it's I just love seeing white people turn on each other in general. Well, cornbread's means, not there, so they had to switch that narrative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and Daya is a mega bitch. So like I I'm like, I'm starting to enjoy it a little bit just because yes, it's nest yes. like it was necessary in the last episode when mama was like, How have I been moderator? Who is gonna do it's it's pause, it's rewind, it's eject, it's return. Okay, that's not happening. <laughs> I'd be that I would have been a bitch too. Like if we're gonna make sure we're gonna win, but I guess she's the necessary evil right now for this to not be boring. Yeah, because right. I need someone to pop off. I was getting tired of the kumbaya. <laughs> and I can say I've been enjoying um, the untucks mainly because diabetes is so salty. And like that, like when we think about the. OG on Tuck seasons. It used to be, it used to give that like no shade. I really wish they would start giving the girls alcohol just so we could see them cut up even more and loosen up even more. They got bubbly, but that's that carbonated no, like I, what is I, that? I, I like give them dark, liquor. I'm gonna see what dark liquor does to those girls. Give us juju be like on the lip sync black bell, <laughs> just sweating bullets, you know. <laughs> Deprive these girls of craft services and sleep and telling you. See yeah, I want to see what happens. They can need to wait till I'm on for that so I can really cut up because... <laughs> I'm wanna... also... I'm watching the first season of Drag Race Italia. The, those oh. episodes are long as hell. They're like... It's like we can I... cut them like out. But I do enjoy the Untuck segments because the Ooh, bitches, they go they <laughs> the bitches be reading reading like I'm that's like, can the, we can we import that to the Untucks over here? It's America. my favorite part of Italia is the Untucked, especially that one iconic episode where they were like going in and in in the back. Yeah, they even got a little physical for a second. I was like, child, this is a lot. This is a lot to deal with, but I love and it. And then the next episode made, made them bitches lip sync before they even hit the room. It like, was still good as like, send someone home. Like, what is the purpose of this? You could have just sent them home. <laughs> yeah, like we, we need, I want, I want that type of drama back to American. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. That, that was, would be that, good. That was actually a really good time. I was watching that like, what? <laughs> Yes, I love. I will, and I will be tuned in for Drag Race's How Yeah season two, if only for just to see how passionate the girls are, and they just. They I just, just need a different winner. I need a different winner. I didn't like the winner of the season. I they mm. didn't. It was like, girl, that Loki gave me of Juju B for um this season made it all the way to the finals and won. I've been like, hi. I, I guess they want to just show that anything is possible, or <laughs> the I don't know. Or they probably assume that people weren't going to get through the whole season, even it's, though it's only six Anything episodes. is possible for me. <laughs> <laughs> anything is possible. So You're you right. Have to be, you You're have right. To be, especially the way they're producing it now. 
Anything like, is possible. A trip anything. to Hollywood. And losing is the new winning. That's the that's the new motto. Losing I mean, is the new winning. Ask Shangela and Willem because they're booked, blessed, and busy. And it's yes. I mean, <laughs> yes. I, I feel like we had a very um, productive conversation. So I want to turn to our closing ice. Well. Well, we're going to turn to icebreakers, but I have one question before mm. we I go to the question, the icebreaker question. What is your favorite institutional um, drag race challenge and why? Uh, it would probably be Snatch Game. Mm. It, I mean, it's the design challenges are fun with the um, unconventional materials. So that's very Project Runway and it reminds me of that. But Snatch Game, and it's so cliche to say it, but in reality, if you're not quick on your feet, if you're not funny, if you can't be a character and isn't drag all about being a character or an extension of yourself, eh, I, don't, I don't know what's happening here. And I think... Once you get in there and you can at least get a chuckle in, not you don't even have to win the whole thing, just a chuckle, just safe. You did something. Like you actually prevailed through because Snatch Game, they filmed for a while and you have to hold that character for quite some time. I'm all about it. I would love to, I can't wait to do Snatch Game if I ever get to do it. I'd love to do it. Like I'd love to just be there and make RuPaul laugh out of nonsense. Like, oh, and no, and the roasting. I guess the, the comedy stuff. Yeah, roasting, improv, anything to do with improv. I like it when people are quick on their feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say Snatch Game if every Snatch Game was consistent from season to season. Mm. Now, there are some Snatch Games where it's just like, bitch, I feel like I'm at the stand-up show. I'm for, like when Shay did, uh, when, Sh- when, Sh- when Shay and Juju be together for their All-Stars, oh, that, that, was like, that was a fucking key. The, when they, the preview for next week saying Deja be Little John, I was falling out just from the previews. I'm like, if she don't this, win this one, I don't know what to tell yeah, you. At I'm this like, point, I'm keying just from the snippet. But and then like the UK, they consistently kill a fucking snatch game. Oh yeah, B- when Bimini played a character that we didn't even uh, oh, know who she was. was the, the nipples are the windows to the so- like. I was and, like, I don't even know who this bitch is. And, but but she know. was on the snatch game for this season for UK okay. versus the world. That was literally her. And okay. you see how Bimini made her funny because she was not funny when she was there. <laughs> like that's the amazing part about snatch game. That's why I like it so much. Uh, but you also. So Ben de la Creme has to get my time. You have never missed on Snatch Game. Like, no. But Maggie Smith the first time. But then, of course, my favorite was, um, uh, I forget the man's name, but the way he was talking. Oh, Ben was just oh, so. Paul, 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 Paul Lind or something like that. Yeah. I, yeah. It was ooh, so funny. Every joke. Boom, boom. Ginger Minj, too. All, they're all funny. Yeah. I'm, I'm just a fan of Snatch. <laughs> I would say for me, the, the my favorite institutional drag race challenge is the Rusical. Mm. Cause I just like for, I like the I like the music, I like the songs, I like 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 as a viewer, like, oh, I would like to do this. It now all rusicals aren't the same because oh, it's just like what the fuck was this about? Right. But some of the the first rusical where I was like, oh bitch, like this is really when they did the I think that was season six when they had Adore Delano and um, Courtney Act. And it, the the whole preview was like, the American Idol girls are about to go at it. And they the did play that. Really, they, they played really, that. They really went in. I like that musical. Like, I think of that musical. I think of the Kardashian musical from season Glamazon five. Airways is my favorite. Like, Yeah, I, Glamazon. That was a good one. And then the Rats, well, even though it was fucking disgusting. It was iconic. See, <laughs> the performances from that rat rusical, like I, I just think it's like I, I think it's the you have to have the comedy, you have to have the movement, you have and to the have right queen, the voice, and you have to have the look because if your look is not right for the musical, they'll read you for that. And I just, I just think like that's the, and you just have to have presence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just um, now the rusical from season that social media rusical, I was just like, what, what, what are we doing here? But. Wait, what are your what is the least favorite though for you? I would say the least memorable one was that farmer musical from um season 10 cuz I didn't get it. I was just like 
I I hate the Rusicals, so it's just so funny. <laughs> like that you, I like that's like my least favorite, because it's like okay, here comes this really shitty song that someone created. Shout out to you for making it, but sometimes they're just really really awful, and um, I, oh god, no, yeah, just no, no. I think I was what I was referring to was your least favorite institutional challenge oh least show. favorite and mine is anytime that rupaul makes them sing with something like that <laughs> that's that's always my least favorite like tell me these babies sing you know they can't sing <laughs> janie <laughs> i don't even think it's about them like the voice because it's obvious it's all of them can't sing. it's about the persona and the like bitch, like I'm staying, I'm planting my feet into the ground and you're going to, like I like that. I like that. Like, bitch, I know you can't sing, but make me know it. And I just, just I like the I'm like that. rap. Just rap. Just say something. Make good lyrics. That's all I'm asking of you. But then when it gets to Juju B. Or you know, uh, listen, we can talk about Queen of the Universe, okay? It just just a lot of. I don't even think I got through Queen of the Universe. I think I watched like the first two episodes. I, I'm I will be willing because I like the universe. I'll be willing to give it a, a chance again. Season two is is actually coming around, so yeah, there okay. there will be another season of it. Um, it was I. I liked the show a lot, but judging was also weird there too. <laughs> there was what? a couple of. Huh. Like, why did that happen? I would say the institution, the thing that's becoming an institution that I don't like, I don't like the, um, like the, like the, the talk show, like the, the pink table talk or even oh, the, 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 pa- the little panel. I'm just they, like, yeah. what the, like, how does a bitch really win that though? Like, how do you, like, I feel like those episodes are like cop out episodes to like give a bitch who who wouldn't necessarily win the competition, like because how do you really like? And I'm never like I never really know like with the last week for season fourteen, like do you want it to, like if we're having a conversation or a panel, do you want us to be serious? Or do you want us to be like I never know like what's the what's the, the tone list? that's set? Yeah, Rue even said that I want y'all to make us laugh, but like it make us take something home away with this, meaning like go deep, but also keep it light. And it's like Bitch, so how you can went- you do that, bitch? And I'm talking about when I was the attacked by my parents for a beer. <laughs> like, right. It's like <laughs> medium well. I'm very confused right. how you want the steak. Like, so you don't want to eat steak. Like, what, what would you like? Um, I could understand that. But that those challenges for me, I would excel in because it's like, oh, I have to talk and I have to create a conversation and I have to do it with some random people. But I feel like for those, the, the people like Bosco was funny, but Bosco wasn't the best in that challenge to me. I identified more with Deja. I felt like Deja was deep, but she was light because she kept the She went deep moving. and funny. She did what RuPaul asked her to do. Bosco was more so focused on the comedy aspects the comedy. of making a joke. And I don't feel like I, I didn't feel like I got to know anything about Bosco. It, it's my same critique from when they did it on All Stars. I felt that the group with Trinity, it was a Trinity, a Caria. And I can't remember. Eureka and Eureka. I prefer. Oh, they won. They won. They won as a group, but then they gave it to Ginger, which was weird. Did that was an example of what you asked at the beginning of this when it comes to entertainment value and talent level. Talent was not rewarded. The entertainment was rewarded. Right, because she was like she was like Ginger was cracking jokes, and I think it was funny, but I thought like. Bitch, your group sucks. Like, yeah, your group sucked. So the group should not be <laughs> like, like you are a part of that mass of crap. Like, you know what I'm saying? They were wonderful all together. If he was going to give it to anybody in that group, either Eureka could have had that one ring right there that would have actually been like legit or it would have gone to Raja. TKB did a good job too, but it was really as a group, it was all together versus Ginger doing the work and the other two just being like, eh, 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 eh. Oh, uh-uh. Yeah, I didn't like yeah, that. Yeah, I just, I'm like those type of, and I think even when they did it for season 10, that was like the first RuPaul con, RuPaul con thing. I just don't, I don't, I, I still don't get it. But, but that was know. the episode that she lip sync against Mayhem. And it almost feels like, well, we know that Ginger gonna kill this one. So like, 
okay, let's have her here for that. Like that would be perfect. See, I, I think of these things, I allegedly these happen or, you know, we all, this is all speculation, but I mean, that's just what it feels like sometimes like a little heavy handed, like how that happened. I know. I'm sorry, baby. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so let's end with this icebreaker. So for all, for the next season of our star, all stars, if you could change one of the something about the format, particularly particularly about the judging and the elimination thing, how would you change? What change would you make to it, or what tweak would you make to it? Okay, so this is where it would get spicy for me because I would have the power be um, presented back to RuPaul in terms of the eliminations, but I would allow the person who would win the lip sync in the top two to get to choose who the bottom two is. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because here's how that would work. (laughs) See, this is when you could really start fucking with people's heads and RuPaul's and her decision-making and producers like, well, wait, we, mm -hmm." because this is when we would know that they're fucking with us, right? If I win the lip sync, and the people who are left over, I can choose from to then be in the bottom. I can go on a level of higher competition and a girl who they're not going to send home because clearly they like her a lot more. I could make the t- decision tough for Rue. Hell, I would make it to where we could choose the person from the judges panel to make the decision. Rue won't even have to do it no more. Michelle, you make the, you make the choice this week. Like that kind of stuff. I feel like it would be chaos, but it'd be a welcome chaos <laughs> for me be <laughs> because be it's like chaos. yeah i win this cash prize but now who do you choose to be in the bottom two? better yet fuck that two lip syncs top two gets the lip sync the winner gets the money they get to choose the bottom two lip sync for your life is back on the table legacy and life would be chosen there you go start off with the legacy lip sync for your life winner of that lip sync would stay that'd be entertaining it'd be two lip syncs in the night too we'd be we be kind of here for that I don't know. What I would do is after after the deliberations, I don't even want to see a lip sync for your legacy because I, I kind of feel like the lips the lip syncs for your legacy, it doesn't have that same desperation as the lip sync for your life. Yeah. What I would do is I would have after the deliberations, I would do a lipstick vote where I would have people choose like the bottom two or like the bottom two. Of the- so the jury, you would want it to be back to a jury decision for a bottom two. Yeah. Moment. So you pick the, based okay. off of the, the, but the guidelines is based off of the critiques. I'm, I'm here for that. That, yeah, that would pick be. Pick the bottom two and then have the bottom two lip sync. And then RuPaul gets to pick. Make the decision. The for the I lineup. think that's. I think that would be the better decision to make and do because then that is a group consensus from the people competing on who they thought was the worst. And then Ru would then make the decision afterwards based on what you always ask them to do, which is lip sync for your life. That would make more sense. That would also be fair. And we would get to see that the fire that I feel like we missed from the All Stars lip sync because I because- feel like. You don't see the, especially now with the lip sync assassin thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the lip sync assassin because you get to bring people back. It's just like, well, but just cast them on a new season of All Stars because, like, I want to see more of them. I just want to see, I don't feel like the past, the past couple of years, I can count on like one hand just like iconic lip syncs that I want to go back and see. Yeah. and I like I well, like I want to see a good lip sync song. I want to see a good lip sync battle, and I feel like that will put the pressure on who's ever in the bottom to really turn it the fuck out. Story wise, too, it would work because they could take it personally being voted in that position. If they come back, then it can almost switch up the game a little bit because Rue could then play the number like the mini challenge win, like. This week, we're changing the rules just a bit. Boom, 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 boom. If you won the lip sync, you're automatically going to lip sync or you automatically get the top decision to put one person in the bottom. Then the rest have to decide on the next person. Oh, bitch, that would be a key. Oh, then you can start, because you know, then you can start putting people in like, oh, we're switching it up. Now I'm just going to send someone in I don't like. <gasps> what? Oh, but wait, we don't like them either. So we have to send someone in that could beat them. See, then it'd be about strategy. Like now you're in the position where you've been voted in. So now you have to beat that person. No Knowing the song because they would know what the song would be so it's like mm, okay so this bitch can beat her in that oh 
shake the table. I'm telling you, like that would be fun. That would be fun to watch and mean and nasty, but really good TV. Yeah, because I feel like it will, it will, it will be, you would, you would still be able to play the game, mm-hmm. but you, it, it would be entertaining. It would, it would, for the most part, it would be fair because I'm pretty sure somebody would be shady. And like the, the thing about the critiques is, if if RuPaul doesn't say who's in the top or the bottom, everything stuff could be subjective to some people, especially if you don't exactly. see a bitch. Exactly. Well, like, well, you, everybody else might have said something, but Michelle was reading you out. Uh, so. Example, Bosco talking about Deja. Well, the safe girls back here didn't understand why you were up there in the top. We thought you would be in the bottom. See how that would work in the situation? Right. Like, oh, so we're voting? Hmm, got it. I know what to do. The the social game would be disgusting because now you gotta play with people. I think on All Stars, like the only thing that sucks about All Stars is that you can't lip sync to save yourself like you could in a regular season. Yeah, and that's always a bummer for me because it's like it's up to the person winning now on sending you home, which I think sucks because when you're desperate, that adrenaline rush always kicks in and you mm-hmm. give, you give. So um, yeah, I'm with that. Enjoy this conversation. I, I look forward to see how the franchise unfolds. I will continue to be a, a drag race supporter for as long as I can be. Um, Maddie, thank you so much for coming down and sharing your knowledge and your expertise um, with the audience. Please let them know where they can find you. Oh, well, I'll, I'll give my normal speech I do on my own channel. Yes. Uh, you can find me at Maddie Rance everywhere except for Twitter, which is at the Maddie Rance. But there is a link tree for me as well for Maddie Rance. Grab a branch, eat some fruit. Activia, you better sponsor me, poot. Uh, as well as Patreon, where I do reactions to all the shows I review as well. I'm available on YouTube. I'm also bookable on Cameo. All of the above. Yeah, find me. I'm I'm a hoot. That yeah. that's it. <laughs> and I will I will uh, have the links to Maddie's link tree, which I'm sure has the links to everything mm. on the show notes for this show. Uh, to the Girl Down Podcast audience, make sure if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify that you rate and review. Also, make sure that you are a Patreon member for Girl Down Podcast Patreon. You'll be able to listen to this interview for free, but if you want to watch the interview and see all the facial reactions and the movements and stuff, you can go behind the paywall and it, uh, the video will be available for you to watch. Thank you all for supporting me. Thank you all for being patient. I wish I could make more episodes, but until I'm doing this full time by other job, child, you already know. But I want to thank you all so much. And again, Maddie Rance, thank you so much for um, being a part of this. And hopefully this will be, not be the last time we will be in conversation together. But until next time, bye, you all. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Girl Down Podcast with me, Aeon. If you like the show, please be sure to go on over to Apple Podcasts and rate and review this podcast. Also, make sure that you're engaging with me on social media. Also, if you have any inquiries or you want to send me any questions, be sure to email me at girldownpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, bye, (laughs) y'all.